Look at this thing. Tell me what it does. Stop. Don't say a word. I already know the answer. Nothing. Yet, as it turns out, Pokemon has a power creep issue. And as the generations have gone on, the average power level of Pokemon has increased. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it certainly becomes noticeable when a lot of older Pokemon become flat out unviable nowadays. But typically, you'll be able to find a niche for a Pokemon here and there in certain metagames. Just see last week's video for examples of that. Now, with the Teal Mask DLC releasing recently, we've seen a couple Pokemon gain some game changing buffs, like Shift Tree gaining Wind Rider and Torterra getting Shell Smash. So we know that Game Freak has buffing old Pokemon on the mind. So today, I want to explore some Pokemon that are just flat out bad and struggle to do anything for a team, and also explore some ways to fix that. So let's take a look at some painfully bad Pokemon. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I'm like right there, like literally right there. I'm almost at 100,000 subscribers. I can literally taste it, click the button right now. Also, if you like competitive Pokemon discussion videos, I have a whole playlist of them you can check out right after this one. So yeah, that's another reason to sub. Anyways, let's get into it. When is the last time you even thought about Bayonet? Well, if you're me, every single morning. This dude has such a cool design, and when I found out that it got a Mega Evolution in Generation 6, it was on like all of my teams. Did it do much even with the Mega? No, but I still used it. Issue is, Megas don't seem to be coming back anytime soon, and that was the closest thing it got to a buff in like ever. And obviously it hasn't gotten anything since that Mega. But why would it need a buff when it has stats like this? Look, one of those is over 100 and the stat it doesn't use is in the 80s. Let's not take any deeper look at these stats. It, it makes me too sad. So let's look at the awesome abilities it has like Insomnia and Curse Body. Hey, it'd be cool if it could take a hit, right? It even has Frisk. That's like the newest obsolete ability in VGC. Now that we have open team sheets, you know, you can tell the item anyways, but yeah, this guy has very little going for him. It's frail, it doesn't hit hard, and all of its abilities will hardly ever matter. That being said, its move pool is actually pretty great. Bayonet has access to a ton of great moves in VGC, like Will-O-Wisp, Icy Wind, Taunt, Trick Room, Burning Jealousy, Knock Off, Imprison, and the list just goes on. But it's never going to be picked over anything else if it can't reliably use these tools. So let's take a page out of the Mega Evolutions book and give it the ability of Prankster. Now, I know that whenever someone wants to buff a Pokemon, their first two answers are either Huge Power or Prankster, but if you ask me, it actually does make sense here. Bayonet doesn't have the stats to do anything, so simply giving it priority on its wide pool of support moves would allow it to actually get something done once in a while, and while you might think that it's stepping on the toes of Sableye, since it's another frail Gen 3 Prankster Ghost type Pokemon, they'd actually function pretty differently. Sableye has access to Fake Out, Quash, and Screens, where Bayonet has access to the combo of Imprison and Trick Room, Destiny Bond, and an attack stat that will actually matter. So you can see a legitimate use case for this thing developing from this one buff, so I really hope that Game Freak kind of sees my vision here and gives Prankster to this little dude. As a matter of fact, for like a flat buff of every Pokemon that had a Mega and then didn't get any more buffs, like for example Absol, I think that we should probably give them their old Mega's ability at the very least. I don't think we need to bring back Aerolite Salamence, I think he's good. Uh, you know, Sandstream on Tyranitar, yeah, maybe we can talk about that one, you know? I really hope some of you guys know that's a joke. I don't know. <laughs> Mom, can we have surging strikes? Yeah, Wiglet is the newest addition to the why did they make this club? See, Dugtrio might still be relevant in singles despite its very Gen 1 stats, but this is purely due to its ability of Arena Trap. Arena Trap is an ability which causes the opponents to be unable to switch if they're touching the ground. This allows for Dugtrio to trap in powerful Fire, Electric, and Steel types and then KO them with Earthquake. Unfortunately, Wugtrio doesn't have access to Arena Trap, so it just kind of gets stuck with Gooey. An ability that slows the opponent if they attack Wugtrio with a contact move. Oh, let's check out its bulk, maybe it'll be useful. Oh boy, 35 HP, 50 defense. Yeah, you'll be fine as long as you're not facing a Starly. That's a real calc, by the way. Wugtrio does get one shot by Starly. Beyond that, Wugtrio is pretty fast with 120 base speed, but it doesn't hit hard at all. Not only is its attack stat just 100, but it doesn't get any particularly strong moves either. Except for Giga Impact, its strongest move is Triple Dive. This is a 30 base power move that hits three times, quite literally searching strikes at home. Yes, 90 base power is marginally stronger than the 85 base power liquidation, but when you're strong Strongest move doesn't even crack 100 base power, it can't do much to anything. I'd like to propose two possible buffs. The first of which is to give Wugtrio Arena Trap flat out. Just having this would allow for Wugtrio to trap opposing ground, rock, and fire types and threaten a KO with choice band sets. My other proposal is to give it Technician. This would massively increase the damage output it has while also letting it have a 90 base power bulldoze. Triple Dive goes from 90 base power to effectively 135 base power, meaning Wugtrio can actually start to pick up KOs and threaten opposing Pokemon, keeping with the theme of 
3, it should probably have access to Triple Axle as an ice coverage option, which obviously comboed with Technician would be a pretty hard hitting move. But yeah, those are basically the only idea I have short of straight up a stat buff, but I don't think they'll be stat buffing Wugtrio anytime soon. It seems to be one of the joke Pokemon they just decide to include this gen. Saviper is a Pokemon that is really tough to tackle as far as buffs go. We need to keep in mind that Saviper is actually part of a duo of Pokemon, with its counterpart being Zangoose. Now, Zangoose isn't the strongest Pokemon either, but its offensive presence with Toxic Boost combined with Facade makes it so nothing really enjoys eating a hit from it. Now, Saviper's buff, in my opinion, needs to make thematic sense with it and Zangoose. Looking at Zangoose's abilities, it's clear that Toxic Boost is meant to help it do well against Saviper within the lore, but Saviper's two abilities of Shed Skin and Infiltrator seem to have nothing to to do with its relationship with Zangoose at all. So let's fix that. Similar to Bayonet, it has decent offensive stats with 100 attack and special attack, but it lacks the bulk or speed to ever really click a move. So Viper's offensive move pool isn't that bad either, with it having access to Swords Dance, Knock Off, and Gunk Shot. My proposal to fix this Pokemon is pretty simple. Multiscale fits thematically in two ways. One, it's a snake. Two, it allows for Saviper to take half damage at full HP, living a hit from its rival Zangoose and allowing them to be on more equal footing. Multiscale would also allow for Saviper to reasonably go for an attack and follow it up with a Sucker Punch, or reliably set up a Swords Dance and go on the offensive. Some of you might be thinking, oh wait, but it's a snake, it can't punch. But Sucker Punch is actually just a quirky translation. The move's actual name in Japanese is Surprise Attack, which I'm certain you know snakes are pretty capable of. This obviously wouldn't make Saviper a top tier, but it actually allow it to do something in competitive play, which is a pretty big change of pace. Okay, last Pokemon. This is a pretty short video, now that I'm thinking about it. I'm probably going to do another one. Keeping up with poison types, I think we should really take a look at Ariados. Now, Ariados is a Gen 2 Pokemon. This explains why it's not used that much. Gen 2 Pokemon are historically very weak compared to later gens, and it's not even due to power creep. Most of the Pokemon this gen just had weirdly low stats. This is to the extent that a bunch of them ended up getting evolutions down the road to compensate for this. Had Girafferig and Stantler not received evolutions, they'd probably be on this list too. But let's just focus on this dude for now. Being not only a Gen 2 Pokemon, but a bug type really starts Ariados off on a bad foot. Between its poor stats and its typing, there's only really one thing going for it here, and that's its signature move, a Poison Thread. Now, if we want this thing to be useful in VGC, it's going to have to be a utility Pokemon. My very basic concept for this thing is going to be to swap out its ability of Insomnia for Intimidate. I mean, look at this thing. How is it not intimidating? It's a giant spider. Shinx gets Intimidate? How does a giant spider not intimidate things? I, I don't get it. He just can't be sleepy. That's what its ability is. Obviously, this alone wouldn't get Ariados stocks up much higher than they are now, so the second half of this buff would be to take its signature move and make it a little bit better. Toxic Threat is a single target status move. Meanwhile, Glamora has great stats, a better typing, and a signature move that can poison both opponents and can't be taunted due to it being a damaging move. This obviously being Mortal Spin, a game-changing move in VGC. In my opinion, Toxic Thread should be able to hit both opponents similar to Mortal Spin, but in this case it would lower their speed by one stage and poison them both instead of just dealing damage and poisoning them both. So in concept, Aridos would be much bulkier due to the Intimidate and offer better support options for its teammates. By the end of turn 1, this bug poison Pokemon with bad stats could effectively lower both opponents' attack stats and speed stats by one stage and poison them both. If a Pokemon with remotely good stats had the ability to pull this off, it'd just be flat out broken. But not Ariados. It's probably not even going to see a ton of usage if it ever receives this buff, but it'd finally have a niche in competitive Pokemon, which, once again, is a nice change of pace. But those are just a few ideas I had to buff some really bad Pokemon. There's a ton of Pokemon that we could argue need buffs like these, so more likely than not, I'll be making a part two or follow up to this video where I explore even more of those. But let me know what Pokemon you'd like to see buffed in the comments section below, and I'll try to include them in the next video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Once again, I have a playlist you can check out with a ton of competitive discussion videos at the end of this video. Watching those support the channel a ton, but if you want to do even more to support the channel and get some bonus content and see your name at the end of my videos, like these people right here, you can support me on Patreon or become a YouTube channel member. I'd really appreciate the support, it'd let me pay for more editors and stuff. But yeah, we're coming up on 100,000 subs, so I just want to say thank you preemptively for that. Uh, hopefully we'll hit that in the next couple of days, hopefully I'll hit it before Peoria Regionals. But yeah. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.